What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuild. So last time we left off with the Porsche 911 here uh, with a leak. We went through all that work of vacuuming out the system, getting everything taken care of, filling it up with shout detergent, and it was supposed to be ready to just start cleaning and flushing, cleaning and flushing. That's what we were gonna do, is flush it multiple times with that shout detergent and then flush it out. But like right after we did this, immediately after we did this, we popped a hose and I'm sitting there going, great. It took me quite a while to figure out where this hose was and I'm gonna show you why. And we can start by showing you the miles of piping running from the front of the car all the way to the engine in the back. You're looking from the front of the car, from the front, going backwards. So you have cool, a big coolant pipe, a big coolant pipe, you have smaller coolant pipes, lots of pipes back here. And covering up these pipes are all these plastic shields that we had to take off. Now that we got those covers off, we can slide under here and see what the problem actually is. And I found the problem to be this little tiny hose right here. It's just, it's in the middle of this cooling system, kind of unexpected. I, I wouldn't expect there to be a hose. You've got all these aluminum pipes everywhere, everywhere. But there's this one little hose and this little hose right here is, here's my finger, right? It's literally like the size of my pinky, okay? This one little hose is busted at the top. It has cracked. It's a very, it feels like a cheap hose, really. Um, and, and this is it. This little hose popped in the middle of all of this piping. Look at all this. It's insane. This little hose uh, is 55 or 56 dollars. So we got to go pick one up. So here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Bob Moore, Range Rover, Maserati, Audi. Porsche coming up around the corner. It's kind of ironic though that we are going back to the same dealership that originally blew up the engine in the 911 to begin with. To me, that's just there's just something kind of funny about that. Okay, so here it is right here. I about missed my turn. There we go. How about that for a picture, right? So I found my way to Bob Moore Porsche here in Edmond, Oklahoma, and I got to convince myself this is not a good idea. And I'm not going to do it. I've already got this car started so I can just jump in and leave. But the price on these things are so ridiculously cheap right now. Look at this $66,000. It's beautiful. My God. Uh, I want it so bad. Uh, why are we even fixing this one, man? Why are we even fit? Look, and, and if that one's a little too much for you, here you go. Here's just a regular 911. Let's see what the price is on this one. $53,000. Oh my God. And it's a stick shift. This is an automatic, so that one would be out for me. But this one right here, $53,000, man. What a beautiful car. Beautiful. Oh, this looks familiar. In fact, this looks... Looks, looks very familiar. Looks very similar to what we have right now. A little, a little bit of an upgrade on the, on the stereo system there. <laughs> the rest of the car looks pretty much identical to what we're working on right now. I think the rims look a little more modern. Another one, boy, they just got 911s all over the place. And here we go. Here's a baby Porsche right here. Still a very clean little car, but an automatic again. I wouldn't, if I'm gonna get one of these, it's not gonna be an automatic. I'm gonna get one of these in a stick shift. And I think over here, we've got a, uh, we've got an E53 AMG somewhere. I swear I saw it earlier. Oh, I could come here on the daily. Let me tell you, I could come here like day. There's that E53. There you are. What's up, old girl? What do you think the price is on this one? Tell me that is not sick, though. $79,000. Anybody want to take a guess what the original MSRP was on this bad boy? <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's beautiful. Man, I love it. I love it. Formatic. This thing's got to be a beast. An absolute beast. Wonder what the horsepower specs on this are. I'm gonna have to look that up. I want to see. 
All right, that's enough playing around for today. It's time to get back to work. Oh, they got some Panameras over here. Oh, we don't need to see those. We need to get back to the house. We need to get to work. Let's get this hose put on and see if we have any more leaks. So here's this little hose that's causing all the problems right here. And it's crazy that this little tiny hose is causing such a major issue with this car. But for a lot of you that were asking me why we couldn't just get this hose from O'Reilly or AutoZone or something, take a, take a look. Here, here's what the hose actually looks like, okay? It is a Y. These two ends are small. And this end is much bigger. Very odd hose. I already checked with all the little parts stores and nobody had them. So we're just going to grab hold of all the little clamps here and squeeze them off, hopefully. Well, they don't want to come off. They're kind of attached. But, uh, come on now. Boy, this hose is, uh, this hose has become very stretchy. Look at that. It's very flexible. The new one is not nearly that flexible. There we go. There's one. And we'll have to kind of pull this one out of its little holder here and grab hold of this clip. There's probably better pliers or a better tool I could be using for this. Right now I'm using like some channel locks. There, there we go. There's part number. Do I hear it gurgling? Uh oh. She's gurgling a lot. Are we going to lose coolant? I mean, we shouldn't. Yeah, maybe. All right, so all we got left is there's one more. Oh, there's the hole right there. I see the hole right in the top of it. If we lose coolant, we lose coolant. Let me get my mics out of the way. Let's see what happens. Alright, that's not bad. And it's not really coolant, guys. This is dish uh, laundry detergent. There's there's really no coolant left in this thing. There we go. Last one is going to be fun. And I probably got to get to it from the other side here. So hopefully you can see it split right there. That's where the hole is. She split wide open. This thing is swollen real badly. So we're going to get our new hose put in here can compare uh, the new one here to how bloated the old one is. All right, we're getting somewhere now. Now it's just a matter of uh, putting this pipe back in here and putting the clamp on it. There we go. Get this clamp on and we should be good to go again. It is now time to use this uh, vacuum again. We're going to screw it on, hook up the air compressor, pull a vacuum on it again, make sure it's not leaking again. And uh, we've got our bucket full of Shout laundry detergent. I filled it up a little higher this time because it really, this car holds a lot of coolant. Um, so we've got it filled a good halfway, maybe a little more full. I emptied the rest of this bottle in. We used half a bottle last time, half a bottle this time. And then we're going to proceed to just flush, flush, flush. All right, boys, here we go again. Backing down the system. The hoses start collapsing. The goal is to get this thing back over here around 25, where it was before. And get it to hold a vacuum. Let's see if she'll do it. So as you can see here, we are sitting... Uh, past the 25, which is excellent. That's where we want to be. I've disconnected the uh, the hose and we've got the valve closed and we're just going to watch it a little bit longer, make sure it stays. And then we'll proceed to uh, siphoning in this shout laundry detergent into our cooling system. All right, everything is holding good, nice and steady. We now have our uh, hose into the dish soap. I want to take one hand, just make sure that this hose stays down here. The other hand, I'm going to crank open this valve and you can actually watch it and it sucks us down fast too man I mean it's it's kind of insane how quickly this is going to suck up 
almost an entire uh, container of water here. But you just let it flow until that dial gets to zero. When it gets to zero, it's full. I know we already did this once and kind of sucks we're doing it again. But I'm going to keep this down here. We're going to keep it on the level. And we're going to hope that I put enough in this to actually fill the cooling system this time. So as you can see, it did its job. It filled it up. And it took pretty much the whole bucket. It's almost completely empty there. So now that we got it full, I cleaned off the oil cap again. Now keep in mind, this is something, this is gonna, anytime you get oil introduced into the cooling system, it's gonna take a lot of time, a lot of patience, and a lot of work to get the oil out of the system. So we're just gonna have to keep doing this until things are looking good again. And uh, once everything is looking good, then we can make sure the oil is full, drive it around, and find out if oil ends up back in the cooling system again. At that point, we're gonna know. Either we've got a blown head, cracked head, or this was just residual from the last motor before it got swapped out. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna climb in here. I've got the radiator cap back on, or the expansion cap, whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna fire it up. You gotta wait. There's a little oil light here. It tells you two, one, zero. I'm gonna fire it up. We've got the heater on. I wanna make sure we get that stuff circulating through the cooling system. Heater core and all. I'm gonna roll these windows down because it just got awful hot in here. It's gonna get even hotter with the heat on. Get those windows down. We're gonna let it run for a while, get up to operating temperature, but wait for the cooling fans to kick in, and then we'll check on it some more. It's taken several days, although for you guys, this all has happened in one video. From the, from the time the hose popped and we started having suds all over the ground to the time where right now it is actually running beautifully with full pressure on the cooling system and no leaks it's been three to four days the part had to come in uh, to our local porsche dealership here in edmond oklahoma from uh somewhere around the coast i don't remember if it was florida or where but either way we got that one little bitty hose replaced and i'm happy to say now she runs nice and quiet listen to this almost sounds like a sewing machine I can stick my hand on the uh, hose here and it is nice and tight so we've got good pressure on the cooling system there take a look inside and uh, put my hand on the heater I got the heater running the heater is nice and hot whereas uh, before today the heater was lukewarm at best take a look at the dash here See if I can drown out some of this uh, some of this light over here. You can see the gauges, oil pressure is just above one. The temperature is right between the 180 mark. Or actually, this, I think the, it's sitting right at 180. I don't know. No check engine lights, no warning lights. Everything seems to be happy. And the best part is we don't have any leaks at this point under the car. So here was our culprit. I showed you this earlier. Hopefully you can get a a little bit better view of it out here. This is why we couldn't just go to O'Reilly and get one. Um, <laughs> look at that thing. And the split, the split was right there. I can actually see the cut right there. Tiny little cut, but just enough to cause a problem. So I guess now all that's left to do is continue letting it warm up, circulating the uh, uh, dish detergent through the engine. I've got a whole nother bottle, another 60 ounce bottle, so we can do this a couple more times. I'm not gonna bother doing it on camera. You've seen me do it twice now. You don't need to see me do it two more times. We're gonna get this thing flushed out the rest of the way. Um, and I think temporarily, I'm gonna fill it back up with just straight water because it's gonna take a while to flush all the suds and uh, laundry detergent out of it. But I think we're gonna, after we do all this flushing with the detergent, then we're gonna do it, fill, run it, drain it with water, 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 until eventually we get everything out. Once we get everything out, I will uh, open up the drain and I'll actually use my air hose. I did this earlier. Uh, take this cap off and put my air hose on about 30 or 40 PSI. And I stick my air hose in here and I just take my hand and cover it up enough to put enough pressure on it. And it will actually force the remaining coolant in the system out of this back drain plug back here um, and then we'll just do that vacuum fill again we're just going to keep repeating this until everything comes out nice and clean once it's nice and clean we're going to come back 
after driving for a while and I'm going to tell you guys whether we still have water entering the cooling system um, or if it was all residual and we scored big. Right now this is a huge toss up. So we're at the point now where it's almost moment of truth time. Hopefully in the next video I bring you guys, we're going to know for sure. Either this thing's got a cracked head and we've got problems on our hands or this thing is good to go and it was just a matter of getting the old oil out of the cooling system so i mean it's a huge deal on, on one hand we won big for seventy eight hundred dollars and on the other hand uh you're talking about a car that retails for twenty thousand dollars and a motor is going to cost eight grand we put eight grand into it to buy it and, and the few little accessories and stuff we had to buy for it so far so we got eight grand and a motor is going to be 85 at 16.5 so i mean we're still not losing but it's one of those things where at 16.5 we really can't afford for anything else to go wrong and we know it's a german car it's a european car something else is going to go wrong we already know this that's the name of the game but we are so close to figuring out if we scored big or if we're going to end up having to put a motor in it and uh, I guess that's where I'm going to leave this. So stay tuned, folks. If you enjoy the Porsche content, give the video a big thumbs up. If you don't like the Porsche content, give the video a thumbs down. Don't forget to comment your thoughts down below. I do read them. I don't get to respond to all of them, but I do read them. Cooling fans just kicked in like they're supposed to. Perfect. That means the cooling system is working. I'm excited because we could get into some fun mods for this, man. I mean, fab speed. Uh, anyway, we could get into some fun mods for this car. Let me tell you. Um, Real quick, sorry to interrupt your programming, but we actually had yet another problem. So as soon as I got done telling you guys we would be back and we would see you soon in the next one, <laughs> this hose right here broke. This goes from the expansion tank and leads a couple different directions. I'm not even 100% sure what it goes to yet, but you can see she collapsed and broke right there. But the good news is this goes down towards the water pump, I believe. And although I know it's probably impossible to see in there, hopefully what you can see is that there's no oil film inside of this at all, anywhere. And there used to be. When I first pulled this off the bottom of the engine quite a while back, this hose was absolutely filled with caked in oil. So what this tells me is that this uh, laundry detergent that I'm using is actually working. It's actually cleaning out the cooling system. Unfortunately, with this car, because of the oil saturating the hoses for so long, blowing hoses is going to be an issue with this car until eventually either all hoses are replaced or at least all the damaged hoses are replaced. I'm gonna call Porsche in the morning, um, Bob Moore, and I guess we'll see if we can get another one. Boy, you can't see anything there, can you? I've got my little work light under here. We'll pull out real quick. But that hose went right there to the bottom of the reservoir, right, right here, down there. And I had to take off this hose, goes to the air. Uh, this is the secondary air injection pump. So I had to take that off. And I'm almost tempted just to buy this hose right here while I'm at it and replace this hose too. This is a big hose that goes from the pipe down here. And I mean, it doesn't feel like it's soft though. This hose actually feels like it's, it might be okay. Anyway, quick update for you guys. Anyway, do, do me a favor. If you do enjoy this content, share it with your friends. All you got to do is take just a second, click that share button, copy and paste it. Share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, share it with any of your car buddies or friends that might be interested in this stuff. I certainly appreciate it. Thank you all so much for making this possible. Stay safe out there. I will catch you very soon in the next one.